two kilomoles of carbon react with three kilomoles of oxygen to form an equilibrium ideal gas mixture of CO2, CO, and O2 at 3,000 Kelvin and a pressure of 3 atm. Calculate the equilibrium composition of the gas mixture. So kind of get, walk you through this a little bit. I have a reactor and maybe I bring in carbon and I bring in oxygen and then I come out with this this mixture that's in equilibrium and so the focus of the study is this mixture right here and so I know that mixture has some CO2 some CO and some O2 in it so I look and I think well if I change the temperature it'll change the equilibrium composition. If I change the pressure, it could change the equilibrium composition in practice or in, in general, okay? So what I do is I say, this equation is my general equation. I find an equation that relates CO to CO and O2. That equation I've written once, but you would look into your textbook and you would look for somehow they have described those components in an equilibrium mixture. And there's the one equation where you have CO2, CO, and O2 in, a, in, in equilibrium. And the, and the constant is calculated in the table to help you calculate the composition, equilibrium composition. So you would say, okay, we have CO2, 1, and it can disassociate into CO with a 1, and 1 half... O2s, and I stop, and I make sure I've got it right because there's no sense going any further, is it? Is that right? Then I actually take a look, and I think, this is the coefficient in front of the A. This is A. There is no B. This is the coefficient in front of the C. This is what I call the component C, carbon monoxide. This is the coefficient in front of the D, and this O2 is D. So when I come over and I try to apply this equation for the equilibrium composition, I know, okay. So if I look at this equation right here, there is no B, so I can throw that out. And there is no B, so I could throw that out, true? And what I would want to do is I want to kind of rewrite this equation. So it's the number of moles, what did I say C was? Carbon monoxide. It's a little confusing because I got C for carbon and C for the that component of a reaction, right? But but and then I have it raised to some stoichiometric coefficient. I'm just going to put the one in right away. Times the number of moles of D. What is D? Is it half O2 or just O2? It's just O2. And the coefficient in front of the O2 is one half. That's nus of D. See that? Divided by the amount of A, A was CO2, raised to the stoichiometric coefficient one, e times, sorry, not equal to, times the actual pressure divided by reference, one ATM, divided by the total number of moles, okay? Is the total number of moles the number of moles of CO2 plus the number of moles of CO plus the number of moles of O2? Or do I need a half right in front of that NO2? There's so many choices, right, to solve a problem correctly. Do I need that half in front of the NO2 or not? No, nope, there's so many places to go wrong. Um, you kind of think about it. This half tells me if it disassociates, it moves this way, and I get more or not so much of the O2. Uh, this half says that if I had one kilomole of CO2 and it disassociated, I would have one kilomole of CO and a half a kilomole of O2. That's all that, ha that half helps me with. And so it's just a stoichiometric coefficient. But if I wanted to know the total number of moles in the mixture that had this many kilomoles of CO2, this many kilomoles of CO, and this many kilomoles of O2, I just add up. So there you go. Then it's, now what about this exponent up here? How much was, it was one half. I'm sorry, let me keep them in order. 
1 plus 1 half minus 1. So to solve this problem, I need to go and I need to get the equilibrium constant from the table in the textbook. And it's at 3,000 Kelvin. It's only a function of temperature. That K is only a function of temperature. So we find that it becomes 10 to the minus 0.485. True? So this, uh, this describes the dissociation reaction. This is my criteria for equilibrium. At equilibrium, the, the K is equal to blah, blah, blah. All right? So now I sit there and I say I have one equation. How many unknowns do I have? I don't know the number of moles of CO. I don't know the number of moles of O2. And I don't know the number of moles of CO2. Three unknowns, but only one equation. You see that how many, what the unknowns are? I, right? But they gave me some information in the problem statement. They said, you came into this with two kilomoles of carbon. And you came into this with three kilomoles of O2, right? So can I write an equation like this to say carbon balance and oxygen balance? Would that give me two more equations, a carbon balance and oxygen balance? I have my equilibrium equation, three equations with three unknowns. Finally, I think I can now solve this problem, true? What does the carbon balance look like? How many carbons came in is equal to how many carbons are in the equilibrium mixture? How can the carbons show up in the equilibrium mixture? They can be with the CO2 or the CO. So if I'm just thinking kilomoles, two carbons come in, and for every CO2, I'll have one. And for every CO, I'll have one carbon. So what is that NCO2? That's the number of moles of carbon dioxide in the equilibrium mixture. What's that NCO? Number of kilomoles of carbon monoxide in the equilibrium mixture. Let's do the oxygen balance. How many O's? I didn't say O2's. How many O's come in? Three, two, six, or 1.5? Man's correct. All right. See, because I'm doing O's, I have three kilomoles of O2. So I have six kilomoles of O coming in. So for every kilomole of CO2, how many O's do I have? Two. For every CO, how many moles of O do I have? And for every O2, how many moles of O do I have? Two. This is tricky, 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 but you got to get it right. I think we did get the carbon balance correct and the oxygen balance correct. We have to slug it through to get the final answer. You just pick one of the variables, and then you eliminate such you get one equation with one unknown, the one variable that you picked, okay? Let me do this one. Let me just say I'm going to pick to solve for NCO. So I take the carbon balance equation. In the carbon balance equation, I'll say, if I ever see the number of moles of CO2, I'll just replace it with 2 minus NCO. Does that make sense? So what I could do is up here is I could start to rewrite this equation just to show how I do that. 10 to the minus 0.485 equal to the number of moles of CO divided by number of moles of CO2, which is 2 minus the number of moles of CO, raised to the 1 power, raised to the 1 power. And then I have um, 3 over 1. Then I'm going to have the 2 minus the number of moles of CO 
plus the number of moles of CO. And I still have to work with the number of moles, let me change color, number of moles of O2 and the number of moles of O2 to the one half. And then I'm just going to finish out this equation and it's uh, one half on the exponent, true? So you see how I already updated some of that equation. Let's now go to the oxygen balance. And I still want everything in terms of NO. So I look at it and I say, did you know that uh, the number of moles of O2 rearranging is equal to 3 minus number of moles of CO2 minus one half number of moles of CO. You could do more steps in algebra, but is that correct? Thumbs up if you agree with that. All right. I want to substitute for the number of moles of CO2, so I'll have three minus two minus number of moles of CO minus one half number of moles of CO, and that finally gets me down to three minus two, one, I'll have number of moles of CO minus a half, one half number of moles of CO. I'm going to stop right there and see if I can get about six, seven thumbs up if you agree. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So hopefully that algebra is tedious but doable. Now I can come in here and I can update and I put... <coughs> <clears throat> 1 plus 1 half NCO to the 1 half. And I put down here uh, 1 plus 1 half NCO. Can I simplify that total N? Sure, I can simplify that total N. If you simplify the total N, this becomes, let me just say, this cancels this, and you get 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1 half NCO. True? I'm sorry I kind of <laughs> you know, rubbed it out and cleaned it up. But I think this is about as simple as you can get. If you want, you can say 10 to the minus 0.485 equal to Z. Just introduce a new variable. 1 plus 1 half Z to the 1 half power divided by 2 minus Z times 3 over 3 plus 1 half z to the 1 half. Um, I don't like z. Okay, fine. Let's put x there. x. You know, it's, it's just a variable, okay? It's just a variable. And you now need to solve this one equation with one variable, one unknown. This is hard to do. This is where I'd say you have a calculator. Any calculator you can use to solve this problem. You can iterate by hand, or you can read the manual that came with your calculator. So you solve, and you find the number of moles of CO to come in at 0 0.469. Then you just go back and you say, well, I know this equation. The number of moles of CO2 is 2 minus that, so it's 1.53. These are kilomoles, kilomoles. And then the number of moles of O2, come back to this equation, is equal to 1.23 kilomole. And then I box this whole thing. So in equilibrium, I know that that's many kilomoles of each of these components. I can double check. Do my carbons balance? Do my oxygens balance? And hopefully I didn't mess up the equilibrium equation. Let's say somebody says, I want the... Mole fraction, well, you have to sum up the total number of moles, and I, don't, I didn't have that written down, but you just sum it up to get N, and then you do this divided by N, and you'll get into the, 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 the mole fraction of carbon dioxide, and then the mole fraction of the oxygen is 38.2%, uh, and the mole fraction of the carbon um, monoxide is 14.5%. Uh, so you could express it either in mole fractions or in the amounts. Either one. It, it didn't say the equilibrium composition in mole fractions. Equilibrium composition in kilomoles is fine. 